Hi guys, so this video is going to be a demonstration of the process of outlining your paper. The document that you should have open in front of you is your speech research paper assignment. Looks like this. Here's my demo. I'm going to use JFK's inaugural address as my sample. And just a couple things to check your document should look like this at this point. You should have your thesis already written uh, somewhere, either right below the essay prompt or maybe you actually wrote it in your essay outline already. And you also should have copied and pasted all of your research from your group presentation research document into this documents table. So you can see that I've already done both of those things. If you haven't done those things yet already, please pause this video right now and make sure you've done that. If you're set to go, this is going to be the process. So you can see here in the assignment they have listed an essay structure and this you're going to find the same essay structure if you scroll, I've got a lot of research here, if you scroll all the way down to the very last page you'll see the essay structure listed here in the gray boxes and then you'll see space over to the right hand side leaving space for you to copy and paste material into what will be your essay outline. So as it says, use this space to copy and paste your research information you've recorded in your source table into the order you plan to present it in your paper. And this is a process that I do every time I have done a research paper. What I'll do is I, as you can see up here, I'll gather all my source material that I need and I'll try to organize it like by research question as I go. I'll record the source information I've gathered as I go. And then before I actually just start writing my paper, because that's so much information, it would take me so much time to organize it as I wrote, I actually go and l copy and paste it into the exact order I want to write it. So then when it comes to actually writing my paper, all I have left to do is sort of wordsmith and paraphrase and quote and put citations in where I need them. But I don't have to do a lot of the thinking of what I'm going to put where. That part is already done. So that's a process that you're going to go through right now. So what I do is I just take a look at what I need and then I go find the information that I want to place there from my research. So the first thing that I'm looking for is a hook. What made this speech famous? Here's some ideas. Is it a line in the speech? So that might be something I'm looking for, an idea, maybe a powerful piece of rhetorical or example of a rhetorical device. Maybe the time period that it was given in is what really makes it famous. Or maybe it was an issue that the issue that it was talking about that makes it really stand out in history. So as I think about my speech, John F. Kennedy's inaugural address, I mean I know that it was famous for being part of the Cold War, but the first thing that comes to mind is that famous line from it, um, ask not what you can do for your country. Actually, as I'm scrolling, it's right here. He says, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. I think, in fact, in one of my sources I found, they even listed it. As, as the best line. Here it is. Okay, so that's, I think, probably what I'm going to make be my hook because this speech just has such a famous line. So right now you should also go and find, like, some piece of information. Maybe it's what's so famous is what was going on in that time period, or maybe it was the particular connection that your speaker had to the subject. Whatever it is, maybe it's a famous line like mine. Copy it and paste it down below. That's going to be my hook. And a tip here, the better that you can keep track of the sources that you're copying and pasting from as you go, the less work you're going to leave for yourself to do later. So already I wasn't so good at that, but I'm going to save myself time by making sure I'm good at it now. So I need to find where I found that. Really that's just a line from the speech. But I could, I could, this is Matt Atkinson, so I can find that reference for my source, for my citations later. Okay, next thing that I need to find is background. Who gave the speech? When and where was it delivered? Who was the audience? Okay, well I think that stuff is going to be sort of at the beginning of my research. So, ah, yeah, so I've got new president's inaugural address. So here I've got where he delivered it. Um, here's the date. It was K 
Kennedy. Oh, this is what was going on in America. Okay, so that's not what I need. I need this stuff. So when and where it was delivered. Who delivered it? And that's by... I think I'm just going to... When I cite it, I'm, instead of having to copy and paste everything, I might just notice, oh, like his name's Michael Nelson. So I'm going to put MN so I can help myself find that source later. So I'm going to scroll down here. Here's my background. Source was Michael Nelson. I still remember his name, so I'll type it. So that's doesn't answer who gave the speech, but it does tell me where and when was it delivered, or I guess just where. So I still need a date, when, and I still need who gave the speech, and I still need who the audience was, so I'm going to keep going up here. I'm going to ask you to pause this video right now and do this same uh, process for yourself. So find all the background information you need, and I'm going to come back with my part done as well. So here I picked up again. I now have answers to almost all of the introduction information that I need in my intro paragraph. So I've got a hook. I also have answered who was giving the speech, when they gave it. I know where he delivered it, outdoors in the east front of the Capitol. I also know a little bit about who his audience was, so talks about how he knows that it, it wasn't just being viewed by people in America, but it was being reported across the world because of the mass media of the time, and then I've even got broken down in more detail the different segments of audiences that he addresses throughout his speech. So I've got a pretty detailed answer that I'm going to have to sort of condense when I actually write it into my final intro paragraph. But the last thing I need in here is my thesis statement. So at this point, you should already have this written. Maybe you already actually have it in this box, or maybe you need to go grab it from the top of the document where you wrote it during your launch. So that's what I'm going to do. Just copy and paste. Okay, so... At this point, my intro paragraph is done, other than having to actually write it into an intro paragraph. But in terms of my outline, I'm good. So I'm going to move on to the historical context of the speech. And this should be pretty simple, because I have my research organized by research question. This should just be the what was going on in America, the world during the time. So... Got a lot of background on Kennedy. Here we go. What was going on in America when the speech was given? So I've got this stuff from the JFK Library. In the midst of the Cold War, nuclear arms race. Kennedy campaigned hard on the issue of American strength. And I'm going to put that right here for background. And that came from the JFK Library. And then there was one more piece of information I had up here. Right. It says that the young president spoke to the nation after a close divisive election and people were fearful of the drawn-out Cold War. Okay, so there was a really rough election right before he became president. And that came from Sarah Ann Meltreder, which I'll just call her SAM. Okay, but here's something that I want to point out to you that you might have to work on as you're doing this outline. So that pretty much sums up my background information that I have so far. But as I look this over, you know, it says that it was the Cold War that was going on, Kennedy campaigned on the issue of American strength, and then it says here that it was a pretty um, close election and people were worried about the Cold War. But as I'm actually looking at this, I'm sort of thinking that I don't actually have enough information about what the Cold War was and how long this arms race had been going on prior to Kennedy taking over presidency 
to like really be doing justice to the context for this speech. So you might find that as you're doing your outlining that you have some holes in your research. So I'm going to make a note to myself that I need more information on, oops, on Cold War. And you can choose to do one of two things. You can either make that note to yourself here and continue outlining, or what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stop and I'm going to go and get this research done right now. So just a couple notes on how to do that. If you're wanting to add, so back up here for trying to put these in the same order. What was going on in America? If you're wanting to add a row below that to keep things in order, just click into the, the row that you want to add a, another one below. You go to table, insert row below. I want to be answering the same question but in more detail. What was going on in America? I need some, nah, I need some Cold War info here. Okay, so if you run into the same issue, and I'm going to go, I'm going to go to Google and find out some more information about the Cold War to complete my background context information for this paper. If you run into the same problem again, if you see holes in your research, you may actually in this outlining process have to sort of pause your outlining and go back to your Google searches to like complete all the information that you need to have. So. In going back and forth, I'm going to let you take it from here, but in going back and forth, both in getting additional research that you might need, along with just continuing this process of copying and pasting information and recording the sources that you're pulling from, you should end up with a fully complete outline, which should basically leave you just some paraphrasing citation work in putting it all together. So good luck, and I will see you in the next video about paraphrasing and direct quotations.